Mario Rondon, your Spanish orator and motivational speaker. Today I'm going to speak to you in English here and I'm not going to take too much of your time. I just want you to know some of the things I went through that I never brought out. But I'm going to bring them all out to the table now so you know that, hey, this guy has really been through a lot. And he finished school and he did everything he was supposed to do. I want to talk to you about moving away from the ghetto to Elder Avenue. I was very, very happy there in Elder Avenue. There were Jamaicans, Ecuadorians, Cubans, Puerto Ricans like myself, Dominicans, Jewish, Italian, Greek. It was a wonderful neighborhood, extremely heter heterogeneous. But there's one thing that we all had in common is that most of us came from dysfunctional homes. We didn't have a father at home. So that's where I kind of grew up. I took karate. I went up to, oh, just about brown belt. I could have had my black belt, but I decided to start drinking. And my drinking didn't go out of control yet, but it was gonna, and we'll get to that. So I got into aviation high school. I received my first license, my airframe license, to work on the whole airplane. Then they called me back, like it's an honor to be called back, to get my uh, power plant license to work on the engines. As an aircraft technician, you have to have a license to work on the engines and a license to work on the whole airplane, like the brakes, the tires, hydraulic system, air conditioning systems, all those different things that exist on an aircraft. Okay, except the uh, electronics, because you got to have another license for that or be trained by the airline itself. Okay, at age 18, I got a job as an aircraft mechanic, but before that, I got hired to clean the bathrooms on the airplanes, fold the blankets, put the pillows in the right places, and I loved that job. It was almost $10 an hour in 1976, and uh, I found that incredible to believe that today there's people from Washington, D.C. harping and saying things like, you're going to have a lot of opportunities now with this new tax plan, and it's strictly a hyperbole coming from billionaires' mouths that it's going to help. $8 an hour does not help. If you have an $8 an hour job and you have four people in your household, you are starving. You are in just about the poverty wage. You need to work two jobs and your wife work two jobs and leave your kids alone in the house. So I just hate politics, but I hate when they try to step on our minds and make us feel like, hey, you don't know nothing because you're Hispanic. That's not true. I got licenses to work on aircraft. I went back to college. I took 14 hours or 15 hours, worked full time, and still graduated with honors. And I got my degree in public speaking, like I said before. I transferred to Puerto Rico for a while while working for America, and I didn't particularly care for it. All I did was drink, 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 drink. Got recalled to New York. I loved it, then I got recalled. I put a transfer to Texas, and in Texas we got a new home. And I took my sons down there, my two boys, and my youngest boy was uh, born in New York City. And I had my three sons, and I love them, and they're all successful. My oldest one is extremely successful. He has a very successful wife. And my other two boys are doing fantastic, too. They're in the aircraft uh, maintenance, just like I was, okay? My youngest, like I said, my youngest boy was born there, and I separated. And then I met a woman. I started speaking to a young lady in Colombia, and uh, I married her, but what happened was that she did not like living in the house with my my two sons, my three sons actually, and she says, I'm, I'm, I have to move, so she, we got separated for five years, she went to Miami to stay with her sister, and I stayed in Texas, and the money came from selling from my mother's case for the her being killed by two trucks, and I gotta tell you, drinking exact exacerbated. I was drinking every night and every other night I would look at my car, my new car with another dent and I didn't know where it was coming from with the other dent. And I said to myself, man, I'm getting really badly into drinking, but I can control it. I can control it. I didn't control nothing. I got three DWIs the same year. They sent me to a therapeutic camp. It was called Safe P, Substance Abuse Felony Punishment. So it had nothing to do with getting better. And I fell on my head. I had a seizure once because they cut all my medicines. I had some benzodiazepines, which I was taking. And if you know anything about medicine, a benzodiazepine, you're supposed to be weaned out. But they told me, you're not in the hospital. We're not here to help you. We're here to punish you. So I lost about 85 pounds in two months. And because of the lack of nutrition, we only had yield. We only had a yeast. I mean, it was horrible. It was horrible what they gave us to eat. 
was horrible. It was fake food. It wasn't even real rice. But uh, I managed to get through that, and I got out. And then I, my wife said she wanted to move to Miami. I said, okay, let's move. So we moved in with her sister, and I soon found out that she was living to the west, and I was living to the east. We didn't get along at all. She was very, very brutal towards me, and I'm just happy I don't live with her. So we went to Colombia, and we stayed with my mother-in-law for a little while, four months. I got very, very ill. My stomach got swollen. I almost died. She said I had colitis <laughs> in Colombia, and I thought she was a genius. I said, how can somebody just look at your tongue and say, hey, this is what you got. This is your diagnosis based on my experience. But when I got to Palermo Hospital, Palmetto Hospital here in Hialeah, what happened was that my stomach blew up, and I almost died because my gallbladder was about to burst. I had like 28 calcium deposit little, uh, little balls in there. So the doctor told me, you're not going anywhere. We're going to have to operate you. So they operated me. We found a home, a little home. They found an apartment. It was so hard to find an apartment. So we had to move in this little studio apartment, which was very tiny. But uh, it was the best place I've ever lived in my life. I live in a place, the house is owned by Doña Madeline and Javier, and I love them both. And uh, I just care a lot about them. They've helped me tremendously. They've really helped. And uh, my dream here was to speak in a show on TV. Madeline Janos is the name of the show. Tell it, díselo, cuéntaselo a Madeline, which means tell Madeline about your new business. So I wanted to speak, and it took me six and a half months, and I met her by coincidence coming out of uh, John F. Kennedy Library here in Hialeah. And the, the gentleman that takes the filming that does the filming, he said, hey, she's over there, go speak to her. So I spoke to her, she says, he had your paperwork, but he lost it. And I always wanted to tape you so you come out on TV. I came out on television, people couldn't believe it was me. I couldn't believe it was me. But I know that I have the talent for speaking, but talent alone is not enough. You must bust your hump. You must work hard. You must cry. You will fall. You will get up. People will close the door on you. And I'm not hyperbolizing this at all. That's what will happen to you when you try to succeed. If success was easy, everyone will be successful. Everyone will not be dependent on the check from the man and making the man rich. What I'm saying, the man, the company, you're making them rich, they're paying you $8 an hour, and they're making $20 million a year in their business. And they deserve it. That was their dream. Let's not talk about $8 an hour like they're talking in the White House saying that these jobs are going to be fantastic. They're not going to be fantastic. It's going to be tax loops for the rich. So they can keep on getting richer and richer and richer and we get poorer and poorer and poorer. That's one thing I'm not going to allow. I'm going to continue to strive to work hard. Now my dream is to speak in Naples, Florida with some of Doña Madeline's uh, relatives and some business people and I know I'm going to do the best I can to, to give them a, a feeling and an emotion that they can hate. There's an impulse coming out of me, Mario. I don't know where it is, but you've changed my life. I really want to succeed. I want to make it in life. And make it in school. Our youth are dropping out so fast from school. The Hispanics are the worst as far as college. Blacks are doing better than us. And then the whites, and most of the whites, they come from functional homes in the United States I'm talking about, not other places, because I don't know. Most of the whites, they have a mother and a father that have middle income, middle income, they're doing a whole lot better than us Hispanics. But I'm going to leave you with that. I, uh, my tapes are going to have music pretty soon, so I ask you to just suggest, put suggest, you know, put a, a you know, like you press a little bell and it'll tell you that all my tapes will go to you. And I'm gonna have my web page on Thursday and my business cards again to hand out. And any one of you that's out there, you go to my uh, YouTube page and get my number. My YouTube is Mario Rondon, Resume 2017. My phone number is 817-323-4830. You may call me if you want me to speak to you. I saw somebody in church when we came from prayer group today, me and my wife, and uh, he says, what do you do? Do you retire? I said, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I said, I do motivational speaking now. And uh, he says, well, I need you to do that for the, some of the adults and some of the adolescents here in the church. 
So I'm going to be speaking there pretty soon. So my biggest dream is to speak in Naples. To speak in front of Doña Toya and all those people up there that are so wonderful. I love them. I love them. I don't even know them that well. And yet I love them because they love me. And I want to give up myself to them. And I give myself to you. Thank you very much for listening again. I'm sorry that I rushed. And I don't want to take too much of your time. We'll meet again. Thank you.